I want to explain the process of freeze distilling, but before I do, I want to kind of give a, a warning. It could be illegal in your country or your state, so make sure it's not illegal where you're at. Anyway, so freeze distilling in the U.S. started because up in the north they had plenty of apples that weren't really suitable for anything other than making alcohol. The grains weren't available to them or not in the quantities needed and so they used the apples to make apple cider or hard apple cider and then they concentrated the alcohol in it by freeze distilling it by jacking it that's the where the phrase jacking or getting jacked up comes from is from apple jack so let's just pretend this is wine it may or may not be wine and let's say it's seven percent alcohol so you take that I like these containers because they come up to a funnel so what you're trying to do is keep the majority of the ice in here now some ice will turn back into water and melt back in but over time it's gonna get more concentrated and so you dump that upside down and you notice some of that is coming out because it's already started to freeze a little bit but the ice will stay and so when that ice starts to turn clear that's when you know let's see if we can do that well we'll just leave that one at an angle for now and then you know when you have a clear block of ice it may not be perfectly clear but it'll be close to it you know that it's starting to concentrate so you can start seeing the ice turn clear here or lighter shade then I know most of the syrup and the alcohol is starting to drain out. The difference, so right here is the ice, and then it's stuck up here in the top of the bottle. You can use quart jars if you want to. Um, I like these just because it's got a small little opening and it funnels down, and that helps keep all the ice inside um, the container so it doesn't drop down in, in the colander. I'm using the colander like if I used a um, like a quart jar it could fall out of that quart jar and the colander would keep it there. You could drop all the ice in the colander but you're more than likely to have more water get collected than you would if you use this method. Okay so I've left it for a little longer and you can see the white ice crystals are still in there. There's a little bit of syrup left. For the most part we've drained all of the, the syrup and the liquid contents out so we've just left the frozen water behind. And so I'm going to do this again two more times and you can see some of the sediment up here is also left. So I'm not going to bore you with the rest of it but I'm going to take what I've collected freeze it again and just keep repeating this process. Normally about three times is good enough for me, sometimes four, just depends. But the more you do it, the more concentrated this will be and the less water you'll get out of it each time. So some people worry about freeze distilling that you're going to get sick from it. Like when you distill, when you do traditional distilling, you have the heads hearts and tails. So you throw away the heads and the tails, you keep the hearts. That's the best part. The heads could make you sick, could even cause you to go blind if you distilled it the wrong way. That won't happen with freeze distilling. So if I had three small bottles of wine and I drank those, that's equivalent to me drinking one of those small bottles that had been freeze distilled. The three doesn't have any impact, doesn't make me sick, doesn't give me a hangover, then the one bottle of freeze distilled won't give me a hangover. 